episode, we'll look at the Ice Cube Gem, which is a date recurrence library for Ruby. And this is one of the many gems that I really like because of the documentation. It's really clear, concise, and it gives you a lot of different scenarios and examples to show you how this gem works without going overboard with too much information. So to get started, we'll add the Ice Cube Gem to our gem file. Be sure to run Bun on Restart Your Rails application. Next, let's have a look at the database schema. There's a table called events, and within here, we have a name occurrence, which we'll use as a enumerator, then two date fields, a start date and a end date. And within the event model, we have our occurrence, which we set as a enumerator, and then we have three values, where it can be bi-weekly, which we set to zero, we have monthly, set to one, and annually, set to two. So next, whenever we pull up an instance of our event, we want to be able to access a recurring schedule. So we can create a method called schedule. And within here, we would want to create an instance of our ice cube scheduler. And we're going to default it to now to the start date. And now that we have the schedule created, we can create a switch that we can look at our occurrence. So when it's biweekly, monthly, or annually, we can do something different. So with the biweekly, monthly, and annually, whenever one of those is selected, we would want to create a schedule add recurrence rule. And this will create a rule set for the schedule object that we've created that we can then call something to reoccur on a periodic basis. And it's all being anchored from the start date. And so for the biweekly rule, this is something that would occur on a weekly basis every other week. So we would use this ice cube rule weekly method, and then we would pass in two. And for the monthly rule, similar to the weekly rule, we would just do something like this, where instead of weekly, we would call monthly, and we would just set this to one, meaning it would recur every single month. And then for the annually, that means once a year, we can then just call yearly, and they have one in there indicating that it would just happen once a year. And once we have the occurrences set, we can just return the schedule. So within the Rails console, let's go ahead and create a start date that we're going to set to January 1st, 2017, and then an end date that we'll set to the last day of the year. We can then create a new event where we are just setting the name is equal to the 2017 calendar. We set our start date to the start date and the end date to the end date. We can then call something like event.schedule and this would invoke the instance method within our model. And then within here, you see that we have the ice cube schedule, which is returned. And keep in mind that in our database, we have this set to default to a biweekly schedule. So if we want to see all of the occurrences that occurs between our start date and end date, we can call the event schedule, and then we can call occurrences, and then we would just have to pass in a end date. And then you can see that this returns an array, and it's an array of all of the different events. So if we look at the first one, it anchors on the 1st of January. Therefore, our first event is on the 1st of January. However, 14 days later, since it's a biweekly schedule, we have the 15th, and then we have the 29th, and so forth, all the way up to the last day of the year, which happens to be the last event. So I highly recommend that you check out the documentation because there's a lot of things that you can do with the recurrence gem. For example, we can call the event schedule previous occurrence from a point in time, which is the dates today. And then if we look at this return, you'll see that the last event on our biweekly schedule was on July 30th. And you can also call something like event schedule next occurrence and then pass in a date. So this is going to look at the next time that this recurring event occurs, and it's going to recur on August 27th. And there's also a method if you just pluralize this, so the next occurrences, we can then pass in something like four and then we would find the next four occurrences. So we had the 27th, September 10th, September 24th, and October 8th. So one great use case for the Ice Cube Gym is a application that I wrote some time back, and it's something that I use for my personal finances. So we can see that the mortgage, it's set to occur on the first of each month. So we can go to all the additional months to see that the mortgage pops up. And then on a bi-weekly paycheck, you can see that the paycheck occurs bi-weekly. And then you have a credit card and a cell phone bill, then electric and water. And then again, here down on the September frame, 
you see that the mortgage pops up again. So this application is used in the Ice Cube Gem, and you can see that it works fairly well. So in our next episode, I want to look at being able to kind of recreate something like this, where you have your mortgage, but then you can actually click on one of the events and then perform some kind of action. And then when you create that action, you'll see that it updates and it's basically removed it from the reoccurrence. And now it's added some other status to it. And you can see that we can do the same thing for like the cell phone where we create a payment and then it shows it as paid. So this is a very simple tracker and it's not linked to any kind of bank account. So we have to update and enter in all the information manually. However, it has worked really well for us. And on the first version of the software, before I had created the reoccurring events, I had basically built out all of this manually and it was very tedious and very difficult and it was kind of buggy as well. So once I found out about the Ice Cube Gem, not only was I able to simplify and reduce the amount of code, but it was a lot more stable. So you definitely want to check it out and also check out the documentation because it does have a lot of examples in different situations. And they even go as far as to show you how to create different daily rules, weekly rules, monthly or by the day of the month, and yearly rules. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.